Hey YouTube, what's up? It's DJ Lawton here. And today I want to show you how you can make some pretty good rhythms using math. Now don't click off this video. It's not going to be anything too mental and very basic, simple math, but you'll see very quickly how you can use this to create interesting rhythms and even layer other rhythms on top of each other. So let's get straight into it. So what we're going to talk about here is something called equilateral rhythms. And this is something I picked up from Unlocking the Groove, which is a book, which I think originally started as a PhD thesis and then became a full book um, in the 90s. And it talks all about like electronic music and how rhythms are used in there to create interest and uh, keep things uh, texturally layered and all that. So as I go along here, I'm going to put some equations on the screen and then we can follow along. Let's start with a very basic equilateral rhythm and just explain what that is. So let's say I have here the space of 16 sixteenths, right? So this is a one bar clip and it has 16 spaces in it. So let's say I uh, wanted to put four notes over 16 spaces. So we could say this is four in 16. So on screen now, as you see, it says four in 16. So I put in four notes. But obviously these aren't equally spaced apart. They're all clumped up together at the start of the clip. They should be spaced out. So as we start to move stuff out like this, we would say then this is four in 16. Or you could also, you know, this would be like a four to the floor rhythm. So it would sound like this. You're like, okay, that's pretty cool. But what if we wanted to do five in 16? Well, that's very simple. So we just put five notes in instead, and we start to split that out until that's equally spaced. So now you see there's two spaces between each one. But then there's three spaces here because there isn't any more notes to fill that space in. So sometimes there will be an unbalanced amount of space, but that's what gives an inch that's what makes a uh, rhythm interesting so again let's do it now with six so this would be six in 16 and it might look something like this it might sound something like this we could also you know change the size of the loop so we could now have eight spaces and we could do something like three in eight now so now that we understand that, we can look at some very basic rhythms. We can also then think about shifting. So how shifting works, and I explained this in a different video, is you take that rhythm you just made and you just push it one to the right. Let me just uh, duplicate all these notes across like this. And then how shifting works is you can move all the notes to the left one or to the right one. So if I move them to the left, we could say this is three in eight, S minus one. Or you could say this is three in eight, S plus one, depending on which direction you're shifting. S being the shift parameter. So let's say we go shift minus one. The rhythm is still uh, three in eight, but now it's S minus one. It sounds like this. Let me just put um, a kick drum in so that we have some point of reference. See, and it changes the rhythm quite quickly into something more interesting once you start shifting. So now let's go S minus two. S minus three. S minus four. That's quite cool, I quite like that rhythm. S minus five. S minus six. Minus seven. And now we're at S minus eight, but the what we're actually done is we've done a full loop. Now we've gone back. So there is no S minus eight in this situation because if there's eight spaces, the clip is eight spaces long. Once you hit minus eight, you're actually done a full rotation. So this would be back to the original rhythm now. Something else we can do is we can combine the different equations. So let's say we we consider this an eight space and this is also an eight space maybe this first one will be three three in eight that looks something like that and the next one might be two in eight so it would look something like this so these are two separate equations that have been put together and you create a new rhythm such as this and now again we can duplicate this across into empty space just so we have extra notes to play with and now we can start shifting so we can go s minus one and go s minus two 
that's minus three. And there you go. And that's basically it. And then you can start thinking about layering on top. So then you might say, right, okay, I've got my three in eight, and then I got my, sorry, I've got my, yeah, I got my three in eight, and then I got my two in eight as a, as a minus three shift. And then you might come up with a new equation and a new equation and just make sure these equations are different from each other. And what happens is you get a, a lot of textural layering going on and your rhythms become really interesting really quickly. So it's very simple math and I would applaud that you just go go and experiment with this yourself with some sounds and you'll very quickly see how you can make very detailed drum loops in a very short amount of time. Uh, and then obviously you can start thinking about playing with the velocity settings and stuff like that to, to add a bit of spice. Maybe start shifting stuff off the grid slightly, you know, get stuff sounding a bit more swung. That's personal preference, but that's something you can do. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.